What's up, everyone? My name is Justin Odisho, and welcome back to another episode of my podcast. This is episode number 28. I'm joined here with Cliff Sargent. He has a channel on YouTube called Better Than Food, where he reviews books, and he also does other things like interviews, talks about, I mean, you, you do film sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to talk to you because I'm also very interested in reading and books, and I think it's important. And a lot of the people that listen to this are into film and video and editing. And I think there's a really huge crossover too, where like books and films intersect. So I think there's a lot of cool stuff we could talk about. So thank you, Cliff, for coming on the show. How are you doing? I'm terrific. Thanks for having me, Justin. Awesome. Here yeah. in Detroit. Luckily, it didn't snow today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cold, but didn't snow. So I gave you a little bit of an intro, but uh, could you tell whoever's listening a little bit more about yourself mm-hmm. uh, f- besides the fact that you like books and you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all there is to know. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I have a background in film, so I went to school for film. I'm originally from the Pacific Northwest in the Portland, Oregon area, mm-hmm. and I've been doing this for about four years, and I spent some time in Los Angeles and then over in St. Pete, and now recently came up here to Detroit, and I'm uh, loving it, but uh, I've been reading my whole life and always obsessed with books and literature and film, so thankfully I found an outlet for all those, uh, all those obsessions, and uh, I'm amazed flabbergasted to see that some people actually uh decided to come along and watch a show so thank you to all of them because it's a, it's still a surprise every day and i feel like i'm uh, incredibly fortunate but yeah over the years there's been a steady growth of a community of people who love weird books from all over the world and it's so varied i mean the audience is so the age range and the uh the uh the cultural diversity is is always surprising me so yeah 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 i mean how i found your channel is like whenever i'm interested in anything I just like type it into youtube or google so i think i was reading one of these books that you've reviewed mm-hmm. and i just typed it in because i wanted to see what people were saying about it yeah and uh there's a surprising lack of book channels like channels that talk about books or reading there's Mm -hmm. so many channels that talk about film Mm -hmm. and film reviews and like video and editing and all this stuff but Mm -hmm. there's there's not that many channels that talk about books so i was delightfully surprised to find your channel because of the first thing i did notice was Mm -hmm. oh this is like pretty nice quality like your camera quality and the the lighting and the angling so it didn't surprise me later that when i found out that you do have i suspected that you had a background in film but you actually went to film school but um i'd love to know why like why did you even start the channel like why did you feel the urge to make videos and share them online Mm -hmm. there was a point where i was not able to do any type of creative work as far as making short films or, um, how do I put it? So I was taking care of my dad, uh, back in 2014 and he was passing away from cancer and I needed some sort of creative outlet. And I had all of these, I was working on this adaptation of this crazy book called story of the eye by George Bataille, which eventually was this giant colossal failure but it was a hell of an adventure for the time that it was actually happening. And I had been obsessed with this book since I had gone over to Japan, read it on the way there, and then spent three months holed up and just like reading this book over and over, going crazy basically, but getting, you know, really falling in love with this style of literature. And I had become obsessed with books prior to this one, but this was the one that really was sort of the gateway drug. And so Fast forward back up to that point where I'm taking care of my dad. I'm sort of isolated. I need some sort of creative outlet, some sort of creative expression. And I'd been influenced by, well, I'd been watching the, the needle drop, the needle drop with uh, Anthony Fantano, uh, the which shiniest you know, melon, this yeah, busiest uh, music, busiest music <laughs> I'm trying to make best one of teeth intros. in the game, best teeth in the game, I think is what <laughs> it was. I think I kind of, uh, I stopped a while back, but yeah, at that, at that time I was a, I was a big fan of his. Uh, kind of like the death grips period when that, when that <laughs> kind of showed up, man, he has like one, he hasn't, 
a million, two million, something like that. I don't even know anymore. Yeah. But uh, uh, anyways, yeah, that was, uh, I thought that if I was finding these ideas and this strange little book, this powerful, there's got to be a lot of other people out there who connect with literature uh, as intensely as I do. And nobody was talking about it. So in a way, it was sort of scratching my own itch and discovering you know, what else is out there? What are other people reading? And sure enough, as soon as I started making videos about these things, the recommendations started pouring in. And now you see the, or, or then I began to really see the history of everything, you know, the tracing all the things that I love back to all these other authors. And it just opens up all these doors. And, uh, yeah. So, so where does this fall into, I, I love that you said scratching your own itch because mm -hmm. that's, what I always say, and that's like why I started kind of too. Yeah. I feel like the people that eventually do keep doing it for years and don't quit are the people that are scratching their own itch. Mm -hmm. But you said you went to film school. Like mm -hmm. where does this fall into, what did you want to do? Did you want to be like a filmmaker? Mm -hmm. Like where does that kind mm -hmm. of fall in? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to direct, write and direct, uh, I guess, quote unquote, independent films. Uh, my hero was Jim Jarmusch and uh, Christopher Doyle and uh, Anthony Bourdain, you know, and uh, um, everybody who was kicking around the Lower East Side in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, but the type of film that I fell in love with, I think, is sort of going away. Um, I think, uh, I, I hesitate to say anything like decisive or, or, um, precise, pre well, like, like de divisive. decisive, not divisive, no, like, <laughs> like set in stone. Like, I don't, I don't I have see. any, I, I don't really know what's happening with it. You okay. know, I've sort of been out of the loop for a while, but I, I fell out of love with, uh, the idealism I had when I was a uh, 19 or 20 or 21. So I've become more obsessed with literature since then, you know, I've, I've discovered just how powerful it is. And I think I underestimated it at the time. So my obsession just sort of, uh, moved and everything changes. I mean, literature changes too, but film changed and moved in a direction for me or I changed maybe, you know, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, uh, uh, I just kind of fell out of love with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like film has been around, I mean, photography, the camera has been around for maybe someone fact check me, but like a hundred something years, mm -hmm. like, yeah. and then moving pictures have probably only been around for less than that. Mm -hmm. And whereas books have been around for thousands of years mm -hmm. so it is a really interesting format debate like mm -hmm. films versus books and i i i'm, I'm sure they're changing so rapidly because they are so new i mean mm -hmm. just look at all the technology from black and white to like sound to mm -hmm. now they're remaking the lion king and it looks like three they're remaking the lion yeah king? you didn't see that <laughs> Yeah, they're re uh, the, it looks like uh, it's it's animated, but it looks so real with the technology today. Uh, it looks like real lines. I don't I don't know uh, about all, all that, but um, my childhood is shattered. <laughs> I think that was one of the first films I saw in the theater. Actually, it must have been four, four or five. Yeah, wow. Yeah, all, always remakes. But yeah. um, one thing I definitely wanted to get into, like the meat of this, is so you definitely like you said, falling in love with literature, but mm -hmm. I always have though, you know, I mean, you, I really you always have really. Been. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like in the teenage years when I discovered, okay. So film's great, right? They're, yeah. they're, they're both film and literature are both terrific. Yeah. I guess it's like the human experience or the, the window into human experience, what you can do with both of them. They're both wonderful, but with, with literature, the, possibilities for learning about human experience that the depth yeah is so much greater i mean it's really truly incredible you know film is magnificent but it's it's sort of a passive consumption whereas with literature i mean you're forced to interpret 
little pieces of uh, ink on a mm-hmm. page, uh, it's, it gets very personal very quickly. And you have to interpret that. You have to make that up in your fucking head, yeah. like to actually understand what it is. And that's, so that alone right there, I mean, you're, you're much more engaged in, in a manner of speaking. Um, and what you can do with it is just absolutely profound. Um, and if you can pick that up, if you can, if that can click with you, especially like at a young age, I think that's just like, yeah, you're, you're sucked in for life as yeah. far as I can see. But I interrupted you. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I was me. just going to ask you like why yeah. you love literature so much. Cause one of the things I want anyone to take away that's listening to this, like, I just want to get into, cause I've always liked it when I was a, mm-hmm. when I was a kid too. I don't know if I actively chose to, but I kind of mm-hmm. lost the habit somewhere along the way. I remember I, I used to read tons of books when I was in elementary school and maybe, maybe my mom forced me to, and I just mm-hmm. picked up the habit, but I remember Good reading job, like, Harry Potter and stuff, whatever. Yeah. But, um, I, I picked it back up again on this quest for self-improvement and business and whatever. So then, right. Then I, I was like, Oh wait, what about this reading thing? I forgot about this. Let me read all these business books. And then once I kind of went beyond that, I was like, wait, you can learn from, not only can you learn from nonfiction, but you can learn from fiction too. Right. You're saying you have to construct all these characters in your head and make this whole puppet show and keep it all organized. And yeah, I feel like it's mental exercise too. And, and yeah, a lot of people say you can learn to be more empathetic through going all these different journeys and whatever through your head. Right. And, um, so I wanted to ask you, I mean, that's how I, I did it. That's how I kind of fell back in love with reading. That's how you, you just kind of fell in love with reading. Do you think like there's a shocking amount of people that, probably just don't read ever Mm -hmm. maybe it's not shocking Mm -hmm. i don't know but compared to film like you said Mm -hmm. where i feel like everybody watches a movie uh on the weekend or whatever it's passive consumption like you said and there's nothing wrong with it and i I love watching movies too and studying them but like why should someone read if you like if you had a chance to convince someone or tell them why they should or why you love to do it. Is there anything that sticks out in your head after reading so many books? Expansion of experience, expansion, expansion of knowledge, but also just expansion of the possibilities of this life that you're living, you know? Um, I don't know if you want to call it an expansion of consciousness. I'm not sure if that's quite the right term, but at least you are so so much more hmm. it allows you to see how complex vast profound beautiful tragic horrifying uh joyous this life can be and has been for so many people. And a lot of times when you're reading fiction, you're going to be able to get things from these authors that they wouldn't be able to just flat out tell you. You know, it wouldn't be the same if they just told you what happened Mm -hmm. in an objective sense. We have to do it in kind of like a poetic way, right? Because then we actually get the feeling and the emotion, the, the, uh, the abstract qualities behind it through the fiction. That's the beautiful thing about fiction. There's absolutely something great about, you know, pragmatic self-help and business and, and literally the passing out of information to make your quality of life better and educate yourself. That's terrific. But then there's there's a lot of um, complexity in there that you can only communicate with fiction by telling lies. Yeah. Well, Getting, they're not lies. Yeah. Well, sort of. Well, I mean, it's like telling, made up stories, but they yeah. have true like based on a true story or they could happen in real life. Right. Or they display real qualities of real people. Like that person's lying or yeah, that person's uh, really dedicated or or resilient or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like telling, it's telling the truth by, by telling lies in a way. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, That's why I love Jorge Luis Borges, who was the very first author I reviewed because he does like this sort of historical fiction where he takes you know possibly events that actually did happen but he sort of rewrites 
you know how how things played out i think that's that's how he does it in some of his stuff at least but uh that man was so smart he's absolutely astounding anyways so you mentioned Mm -hmm. so i guess then you've reviewed something like uh, like over a hundred books on your channel i'm sure something like that yeah you've read much more like that was the first book that you reviewed Mm -hmm. what have you found like through this youtube journey of reviewing books and I guess, how often do you read? Mm-hmm. And do you read just so you could <laughs> review them? Like, take me into that. Do you, the, how do people find truth. time to read? I think that's the thing. Like, maybe now people yeah. are like, yeah, I get it. Reading is good for you, but I just don't have the time. You, know, you can watch a movie in an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. This big book right here might take you yeah. two weeks to find the time to finish it all. Yeah, I, I think that's something that is really important. Reading is expensive. In what way? Time? In the time way. Yeah. And, and I know. like a dollar or whatever. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Not the book itself. The, no, the act of reading is extremely expensive when you have like the whole time money yeah. thing. You take that into account. And I know that people don't like to equate, you know, like that they don't like to talk about time being equal to money when we're talking about like stuff like literature. I understand. But let's, let's be, let's be serious. Like we have, we're going to die. Yeah. All of us. And for that reason, you're going to get a number of books and that number. Yeah. Like we were discussing before this a little bit, we, we could say if we're voracious readers, if we like to think of ourselves that way or, or hope that then we might get 2000, we're not going to get 2000. I, I do not, not, not 2000 Don Quixote's in no. your lifetime. I do not think so. No. You're going to get like, five mm-hmm. Don Quixote's. No, I don't know about that. I hope, hopefully uh, many more than Not that. Not as but, much yeah. as you'd expect. Exactly. Let's say, let, let's say even like a thousand mm-hmm. or even let's say 2000. I mean, like you must be discerning. You must be discerning with your time. It's like anything else, you know, if it's important to you, then build the habit of reading for just a little bit every day, you know, wake up, do it first thing because you're fresh. You can trick yourself faster. Do like 25 minutes right away. Even if you're like fuzzy, even if you're not awake, uh, force yourself to get in there for 10 minutes and then you can put the coffee pot on. That was a good trick. Elmore Leonard, the Detroit crime writer, uh, did he, uh, he had to, uh, get into the act of writing, uh, get into the character wherever he was in his in his story he forced himself to get there before he put on the coffee so Mm -hmm. he said if he never had done that he just never would have uh written anything probably yeah so you could borrow that trick just for reading you know uh as far as how often i read i read wherever and whenever i can i mean sometimes it's 10 minute 15 minute intervals sometimes it's um I mean, probably never more in one sitting than for an hour tops. Yeah. You know, I wish I could say I could go for three or four hours and I could just read all day. It's absolutely not the case. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not some like crazy anomaly guy that just reads for 10 hours straight. No, no. And you squeeze it in and you still have other duties and obligations. God, I wish (laughs) if, if I only, if I only could No. Yeah, no, I, uh, the amount I actually am able to read while taking care of everything else these days, especially, uh, is, is unfortunately low, yeah. but I am very decisive with what I read and I'm very intentional. You know, when I'm reading, I'm reading, mm-hmm. you know, and that's no, that. Yeah. I, I think that hopefully <laughs> <laughs> it, it's hard to sometimes, but mm-hmm. I agree with you. I, I think the same thing with anything. Like even I've been trying to go through and brush up or, or at least be familiar and watch like all the classic films and even the books that I read, I, I try to like read the good ones first. I do some Googling. I find mm-hmm. lists. I find channels like yours for recommendations mm-hmm. because you're never going to be able to, there's infinite amount of movies, books, and music to listen to. Yep. You're never going to be able to listen to them all. And so I, I think this of people who, are only listening to the new stuff or whatever just came out this weekend. I think there's already like a hundred years or plus of uh, certifiable classic stuff that's good that you're never going to finish anyway. So why don't you work your way 
down the good stuff first because you're not going to have time for all of it. So maybe I'm a bit too, what's the word, like informed by the internet <laughs> and that's uh, not good. But, you know, I like working through the, the, the stuff that everyone can agree on is pretty solid. Thousands of people can say it is. I'm sure there's gems and stuff too. But yeah, to be discerning on like what you read. I don't even know what I was trying to make a point with with that, but yeah, it seemed to agree with sense. your point. Yeah. Um, so then, where do you find what to read if you if you if if you have to be discerning about it? Like, do you just pick it up or what? I'm very fortunate in that sense because these days it's just the people who watch me who are, which it's astounding to me. Um, they're very very smart. Like they're way smarter than me. I think your audience is probably particularly smart. <laughs> I, 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 they seem to be. I mean, they're really incredible. They are extremely well read. Why they're watching me, I have no clue. I, I do not know why. But they give me some of the most astoundingly. Uh, I'm just running out of words. Phenomenal recommendations. I mean, like some really truly interesting stuff that I have never heard of before. My God, I just heard this Marcel Schwab. For anybody who wants an immediate recommendation and a short book that you can like pick up right now and have your 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 mind blown, this book called The Book of Monel that I uh, just uh, it was gifted to me by a, a fan in Chicago not long ago. It was absolutely astounding novel by an author who was extremely well known in France in the late 1800s um, by all by all of these famous people. But I mean, I don't think he's a very famous or well known author, but he had a, a tremendous influence so little gems like this mm -hmm. that sort of just come out of the ether from these people who, who you know who have been deeply affected by by them um it's such a personal thing to recommend to somebody a book that you're infatuated with and to see that book have the same possibly even stronger effect on them is something very very special mm -hmm. i mean it's it's really incredible because it's sort of like Ah, you get me. Yeah. Ah, you understand. Somebody else, finally, who understands. It's like going on the same vacation or travel together. Yeah. Work. Yeah. And, you, and you know, maybe you've had, you've met um, people who you become very good friends with very quickly. You know, and that's, that's a way of bypassing all of that small talk and communicate. It's like, oh, read this. Oh, you get it. Yeah. And it's you don't even need, you barely need to say anything else it's it's amazing you know so. yeah yeah i agree um and the and the luxury thing of reading like you were saying it's it is a luxury I make no question that's yeah. the other thing too it's like i think i think back on though when i had to when i didn't do this whole youtube thing and pick mm -hmm. them up i do find like it's it is a luxury because now i have i can be flexible and i can choose to read and i I probably didn't read as much when I was working retail or, or hospitality yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But I can remember wasting an hour every day doing something, you know? Yeah. I do still feel like you could find the time no matter what, but that's backtracking. <laughs> I would, I would tell, when I was, my first job was like a dishwasher at like a seafood restaurant in Long Beach, Washington. Yeah. And I remember, I think my first check, I think my first check I ever got was, <laughs> went to Amazon and probably Amazon at the time to, uh, uh, two, two enormous volumes of the work by the Marquis de Sade. Cause I was a sick teenager. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was funny, you know, cause I was, I don't think I understood barely any of it at that point. No. Yeah. But I was, tr I was reading even when I was working like, uh, you know, just day jobs and stuff. Yeah. But I was trying to find the most extreme philosophical or strange material I could get my hands on at that time. So Going through phases. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think people, sh you have a video on this actually, it's mm -hmm. pretty interesting. Like, do you slowly graduate onto more difficult stuff? Like if you start with the mm -hmm. young adult as a young adult, like the Harry Potter or whatever, and then you slowly graduate to like something longer or like a Ulysses or something that's mm -hmm. very complex and you know, all these references. Do you think, do you just chug through it or do you pick what you enjoy? 
I think it's you pick what you enjoy. But remain open to suggestion um, from people you trust. I read It by Stephen King in the sixth grade, which is a hell of a book to read when you're like 12 years old. Not that I understood all of it by any means, because by the end of that thing, he's like talking about the universe being on the back of a turtle or something, and all these unbelievably straight... I mean, he was on so many drugs when he wrote that damn thing. (laughs) But... uh, not and it's also an outrageously scary book for for a twelve year old and really quite complex and mature. I mean Stephen King I, that, that was that was kind of a gateway into the what was to come in the adult world that was all so foreign and 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 abstract and strange and dangerous yeah. and really really genuinely weird. Um, but dark stuff always. I always loved dark stuff. You yeah. know, I mean, for as long as I can remember, I saw King Kong when I was age four. Yeah, like the original. That was what made me want to make films. So it's like, yeah, if you have an inclination, if there's like something tugging at you, I mean, have you found out to be the the same way? It's like that's kind of like worked out. It's like, oh yeah, there's something over there, so maybe I should go in that direction. Yeah, I, I like I find like stuff. I enjoy stuff, and mm-hmm. then some stuff's boring. Like, I'm gonna be honest. I read The Sun Also Rises. Yeah, I was like. Uh, it's just a, kind of a drag for yeah, that's me. okay yeah and then i read like something like uh american psycho well i'm actually in the middle of it or like some something like fight club or american psycho and uh i'm like this is fun like these are page turners they're funny they're like exciting what do you think of the clothing <laughs> the clothing the fashion it's, designer like i it's absolutely over the top and like i've been <laughs> skipping like it's so funny like so and so is wearing uh, this, 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 and then eventually I realize why the book is so thick. Yeah, <laughs> because there's so much unnecessary language in it. But I actually had seen the the movie first, which is a masterpiece. Which I, I did too. Yeah, and then I, I've then I am like halfway through the book now, and it's actually funny to. They actually go together. I guess this segues right into like how films and novels work together a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause like you said, Stephen King's it, they made that into a film yeah. shining. That's yeah. a classic. And that's a book. A lot of people might not know. And great book. one. So there's times a lot of people say, what's better the book or the movie, or what are the differences between the book and the movie? Mm-hmm. And I think they each have their own. They each bring their own thing to the table. Like mm-hmm. you said, the book, you can go a lot more in depth with it. Oh yeah. But like for example, something like Fight Club, I liked the film better, to yeah. be honest. And the, I read the book, and it was still good. But like, mm-hmm. if I would have never seen the film, I don't think I would have made such a great visual in my head as as uh, David Fincher did. Mm-hmm. Whereas American Psycho, I'm really enjoying reading the book. It's like just as funny as the film, mm-hmm. and the film kind of just is supplementing that for me and like giving me some funny visuals of some of the scenes yeah what do you think between films and movies like Mm -hmm. do you have similar experiences sure case by case basis yeah absolutely i mean fight club and the the fight club the book and the film are both magnificent would i have liked fight club excuse me (laughs) would i have liked fight club the uh the book as much if i hadn't seen the film you know i can't say Mm -hmm. because i definitely did you know i was raised on Fight Club, the film, and that was a, a big, big, big moment for a, a lot of us in our teenage years. Um, yeah, I haven't read A Clockwork Orange. I'm sure the book is very different from the film, but Stanley Kubrick's film is excellent, you know? So, yeah, one it's complete case-by-case basis. Yeah. But they're they're very different mediums, and I would... Never suggest that somebody just watch the film and not read the book. I think that would be a big mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think you get uh, like so many times the, mm-hmm. there's so many things that just go lost in translation. Oh yeah. And you don't understand yeah. why someone's, um, surprisingly some of them are very accurate too. Like they get lines directly from the book, mm-hmm. like American Psycho watching and reading it and it's yep. so funny how much is the same but sometimes they smash several different chapters together into 
mm-hmm. one scene, like the like business card scene or whatever. It's different in the book than in the movie, but yeah. it's it's also interesting to see how they tackled translating that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how I would ever even begin to take this and put it on the screen. I mean, you said oh, that's of course, what you were yeah, doing yeah, at first with that book mm-hmm. in Japan. Yeah, Story of the Eye by Georges Bataille, which would be, <laughs> for, for many people, I think, probably the the last book that they would try to adapt to an actual feature-length film, which, of course, for me, you know, being just uh, completely uh, idealistic, young, 20-something kid, I was like, uh, well, well, then that, it's like Ulysses or something, you know, it's like, that's the, that's the one I'm going to try and adapt. And maybe, <laughs> you know, it could be the case that, that it was actually, I, I saved myself by not being able to, uh, to find the funding to make that thing. But, uh, cause that would have been one outrageous film, but I have to look, is there like a brief synopsis on what it's about? I have no idea. Or maybe I should just. Yeah, you it. might. You might just want to just open that one up and just read it in an afternoon. I think that would be the best way to do that. I'll and anybody to, listening as well. I'll have to get the name. I'll have to listen to it back. Yeah, "Story of the Eye" by Georges Bataille. That'll. Uh, it's a trip. Um, each book is different. Some lend themselves better to film adaptations. Much better, of course. You know. Yeah. So you try and do something like Ulysses or you try and do something like uh, story of the eye or, you know, some surrealist novel or, um, I mean, it's going to be very different than, uh, than American psycho, you know, although American psycho is pretty, pretty strange in and of itself. It is impressive it is, that yeah. they, that they pulled off that film adaptation. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah. I, yeah, I read that, uh, the ending was, left a bit more ambiguous than Brett Easton Ellis wanted really in the movie really as opposed to how he put it in the book but right I haven't finished the book yet so right I have to get through all those brand names (laughs) (laughs) Um, aside from so um I guess let's just segue then Mm -hmm. I had something really good to say but I forgot I've had like I thought that several times. I'm sure it wasn't actually that good though. So, yeah. but, but okay. yours yours was definitely good. Well, here's something Get interesting I wrote down. Did you see PewDiePie mm-hmm. did some book reviews for a short period of time? <laughs> yeah, for I like, think I tweeted about that actually. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Hemingway about the, and Mishima. Yeah, some very uh, like not. M- some like good books, you know, yeah, to a audience of 64 million or whatever people, maybe eight year old kids who like gaming or maybe like regular people. Was, was that exciting for you to see something like the biggest YouTuber doing something similar to what you're interested in? Yeah. Like validating. Yeah. Well, validating. No, um, no, I could, I mean, I'm sure he's a wonderful guy, but but um, I guess you're scratching your own itch anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's totally selfish what I'm yeah. doing. I, I got to say, I'm not doing it for the numbers. I mean, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, but uh, I was surprised. Yeah, I was really happy. There was a period where I was really gung-ho about Jordan Peterson too. And mm-hmm. I think that's probably often a contradiction that I'm into like Yukio Mishima and Batai and Saad and, and, but also Pearson at the same time and stuff like this. Um, I don't know. He, uh, he went and I think was talking about some terrific authors. And I mean, if, if more people are reading those authors and that's phenomenal, you know? Well, I saw he, he like stopped doing it because he said he felt like he was just, kind of giving a summary of the book yeah how have you managed one thing i like about your reviews is i don't know they're just like interesting you you speak in an interesting way about the book and you don't just kind of say okay in this book patrick bateman he's obsessed Mm -hmm. with clothes and he kills a bunch of people Mm -hmm. he's kind of crazy and uh that's what happens Mm -hmm. you how do you choose how do you review a a piece of literature art or even films you've done film reviews too how do you go about doing that well i try and give as little summary as necessary to kind of get the whole idea 
I've never actually said this out loud, so I'm trying to think of like what I do yeah. as a, as I'm as I'm speaking. But I like to have stories in there or make personal connections because I think that allows people to become more engaged. I think that um hmm. I think that's what makes something worth watching is like, I want to hear what you have to say about it. Mm -hmm. Like I've already, that's why everyone can make a video on YouTube. A lot of people say, well, this has already been done before. Sure. There's art. There is other book Mm -hmm. type of channels or film review channels, Mm -hmm. but people want to hear why you thought it was bad or good based Mm -hmm. on your experiences or Mm -hmm. what some certain scene made you think of Mm -hmm. or what was your favorite scene or whatever. Yeah. It's like a story that leads into different stories, you know, and it becomes more personal that way. And if I can, it's almost like I'm like, I might've said it before. I'm trying to write these lines in this script for this review that are going to trigger, trigger some sort of spontaneous, discussion you know it's one-sided certainly but hopefully my enthusiasm for the book and my connections to all these other things will trigger this diatribe it's almost like a kind of just like a trance and i'll just like start going blah 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 about something Dude, and it, yeah yeah people connect with it Man, call it a day. What a shitty description of how I write a review. <laughs> no, I, su- I suggest you all go at least uh, check one out and you'll be like, oh, yeah, this guy can talk about something for a couple minutes. It's pretty interesting. Uh, I can blah, blah for, yeah. for probably too long, but you're very kind. Um, well, because I think, that tra- I think that translates. And I think... I hope the enthusiasm carries over. Yeah, I hope yeah. it's contagious. I think in some cases it is. When it's good, it is, you know. I feel like people could have a successful channel or channel that they could carry. Like I could talk about if I love paint and how it dries mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. And I'm, I actually genuinely love it. I think I would watch someone who genuinely loves it. Explain like how the paint is drying for five minutes. Yeah. Maybe that's a bit exaggerated, but I think if you love what you're talking about, people don't necessarily like I actually, I, like I've read a handful of the books you talk about. But mm-hmm. I probably won't be able to read more than half of them, but like mm-hmm. still like click on the video. I'm like, oh, what's this? Oh, cool. That's an interesting story. Blah, blah, blah. It sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. Just because people love enthusiasm and hearing people speak about something that they're passionate about and just to get that energy, just to get that feeling. Yeah, yeah. People, people have said that that they just watch it too, and then they're not even reading the books, but they just like to come. <laughs> they like to stop by, which is which is great. You know, I think that's terrific because maybe at least some of the ideas from the book, because we we do have so little time. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe at least some of them, even if they're not going to read the book, they can get across that way. If I can do that. If I can get people to even entertain the idea of reading these books, then that, that, that's terrific. I feel like I've I've done a, a decent thing. So yeah, I think you plant the seed, and that well, same you. thing with this podcast episode. If this could just plant the seed, hearing two guys blabber about reading for an hour, go read. To make somebody be like, you know what? Let me dust off that book or whatever. Well, it can change your life. I mean, it can really change your life. I mean, it can give you. I mean. I mean in good and bad ways. Maybe that's something that we ought to be careful of. What's, what's the downside of reading? We have been talking it up over yeah, and over. Yeah, we've only we've only we've talked about the good the good side of reading. Have you ever read a book that made you depressed? Oh uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm reading American Psycho right now. I guess yes, sir. it's got some. Uh, I don't know. If it's depressing. It's kind of funny to me, but it's definitely got some sick moments. There's some it. pretty. <laughs> how far are you? Halfway? Uh, I haven't got to the part where. Uh, well, spoiler alert! Believe, but he believe. Everyone's seen the movie. They'll be, they'll be, he, fu- they'll be fine. Where he kills Paul Allen, I haven't gotten to that part yet. So okay, I'm like on page two hundred out of like four hundred or okay. something. Okay, there's some pretty, there's some pretty intense it's, stuff. In yeah, there. it's gotten. So I can imagine if you're constantly like you got to put your head in 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 the characters' minds, and there's um. 
I mean, there's books where the the narrator is unlikable, and you kind of oh, have yeah. to become them. But oh yeah, that that's that's an important thing too. Why I think. is that bad though? That's like empathy, or does it make you feel like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, you heard that Nietzsche quote of you know, gaze into the abyss, and, or you stare into the abyss, and the abyss stares back at you. Now I have. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, well, I might have been paraphrasing, but that that was one. You know, you stare into the gaze into the abyss, and the abyss gazes back, or whatever. And uh, you got to be careful where you put your head. And I've learned that uh, I got up relatively unscathed, I think. But especially when I started this channel, I was far more of a cynical, really nihilistic kind of character. Yeah. Um, not bad per se, just darker, yeah. much darker, and. Uh, with a lot less hope. Yeah. And if you surround yourself with that kind of art, whether it's music or whether it's film, then you just pretend that it's not actually having an impact on you, or you can't see that it's actually having an impact on you. Uh, I think you might be blind. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's really powerful material. And where you put your time, it's like the people you hang out with, right? Have you ever you know, hung out with characters who sort of, um, they might be brilliant, they might be wonderful, but Jesus Christ, are they dark? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. They, I've been that guy. They but. they say like you're the average of your five closest friends. You're right. Which I believe is true. I mean, I, I agree with saying. you. Yeah. But I've used that same saying to say, well, your best friend's not always going to be Einstein or whoever, all these genius or great business people. Yes, so sir. That's why you have to kind of make sure you surround yourself with the, like the movies, the things you read mm -hmm. are stuff that's positive or inspiring or educational or mm -hmm. teaches you something in some way. And that's, I think that's why I've even been able to learn anything is, you know, my next door neighbor might not know all this stuff, but I luckily have the internet and I can just constantly make my, uh, whatever I'm consuming is like constantly mm -hmm. curated to yeah. what I want to be. And yeah. I can choose who my favorite five friends are or like my favorite authors yeah. or like my best friend authors and musicians or whatever. Yeah. There's, there's a time and place for like anger or whatever mm -hmm. like music right you're at the gym or something oh yeah and you might put on some like loud like angry Misfits. motivational stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> get some energy work out yeah but uh i definitely agree with you you see people who kind of turn themselves crazy mm -hmm. by for some reason maybe it's like maybe they have it in them or maybe they're getting influenced but if you're all depressed and sad, then you're all listening to sad music. Like for some reason, you want to listen to sad music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know you could. You, you yeah. Well, it's, not, it's sometimes it's like the mm, well, yeah. It's it's amazing. Sad music when you're depressed is um, you know, wonderful. Uh, same with sad literature. But you, the problem is there. Yeah, you can be. You can get stuck in that cycle. I think it's a, a yin yang approach is good, but a cautious one. You know. Yeah. Um, me, I tend to I tend to go towards the dark stuff. I like to confront the extremes in literature. But um, as I've gotten older, I, I definitely have have noticed that uh, uh, you got to be careful. It takes a toll. Like if you just live in that world, I mean, literature is an isolated activity already. So mm -hmm. you know, you can see where that rabbit hole goes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, maybe s splice it up. You know. Yeah, yeah. Read, uh, for every three for every one like really dark extreme book yeah read like a nice happy one or maybe absolutely do you do you balance do you read like much nonfiction at all or basically like your nonfiction? uh it's usually fiction i mean i definitely don't have anything against nonfiction, yeah. but uh i suppose like the recommendations have just been coming up so much and they're all fiction so i so i'm really kind of immersed in There's fiction so much to but, do, uh, yeah yeah um but I definitely don't have anything yeah. against nonfiction. There's some terrific books that I've read. Yeah, uh, so that, I was yeah. just bringing it up because sometimes, like, yeah. sometimes uh, if I'm just in the middle of like a a long story, it's time consuming. Yeah, I can 
pop open like a really simple, easy to read, like nonfiction mm-hmm. thing. Which yeah. Is what are some great. of your favorite nonfiction titles? Sorry to interrupt, but I got to uh, ask you. Mostly, I guess, all like business or phil- philosophy, like the stuff that's helped me, like obviously like Tim Ferriss stuff, like four hour work week. Yep. But then like, I love meditations, Yeah. which is more philosophical. Marcus Aurelius? I call, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. call it nonfiction it's just kind of mm-hmm. like a diary of this guy mm-hmm. but that one those are the ones that i can go back to i keep them as like reference books mm-hmm. and i can always go back to them um but those are the ones that don't really require imagination mm-hmm. in a way they're just like pretty straightforward easy to consume mm-hmm. and you don't have to juggle a bunch of characters like mm-hmm. when i was reading uh, the sun also rises Hemingway. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm reading all these high school books. Basically I'm reading mm-hmm. the high school. I was reading well, the high good. school reading list. That's good because reason. a lot of them get ruined for, for, for kids just cause Cause you're, you're forced, forced to. to, you got it. That's the other thing. I feel like a lot of people are forced to read it, Yes, but for some reason I couldn't keep up with all the characters in my head and like, this was getting confusing and I can even imagine if I didn't choose to read it, how little I would care about it. Yeah. That's that's funny. Like, I've read, I read more on the quest of like self improvement now that I'm done with college and now that I'm done with school. Yeah, I uh, I choose to. So I guess you have to let people. Like, you can't force people to. As much I, as you love it, you can't force people to. I, I do guess. not think it works. I no. do. I, I do not think it works. Yeah. I, yeah, I will say that definitely. But what are the, do you have two or three books that really, really hit you? I like meditations. Yeah. That one really opened my mind on yeah. that whole world of like older or stoic philosophy type of stuff. Uh, I hadn't read anything like that before. And it's just a classic because like if it's true, it's this guy's basically diary, an actual Roman emperor. Mm-hmm. from thousands of years ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, right? Uh, anyway, I'm it's an actual Roman emperor. I mm-hmm. think he was in Gladiator. He was portrayed in the movie Gladiator, so mm-hmm. that makes it cool. Walking Phoenix murdered him, right? <laughs> was that? <laughs> I have, maybe I have not. to watch Gladiator. Yeah. But that's a classic right there. Like You're seeing not a work of fiction, like an, the actual writings of an actual Roman em- emperor somehow preserved that he was writing to himself. So it's like, uh, kind of voyeuristic in a way, mm-hmm. and that's that makes it like really interesting right there. It's just a really cool text. So I think that one just was, and it's so amazing how much the problems of then still apply today. Like in the book, it seems like you could, he's like, if so and so is troubling you with their issues, don't worry about it too much, and blah 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 blah. I'm like, that could literally be about your friend today. It's so funny how so much has changed but human nature so much hasn't changed and the problems that he was dealing with as a leader and whatever like i'm like oh that's how that's like when i get a spam youtube comment i didn't think the same way (laughs) it's so funny (laughs) how it applies um that's one that sticks out um the business ones i wouldn't say like changed me mentally but i'd say they changed my life in a really good way by getting me to think about like you can do this whole weird freelancey thing or not freelance, but like you can make your own path. And I'm very thankful that these smarter, wiser people than me who have built businesses are willing to share everything they know. And it's kind of like mutually beneficial between their writing a successful book and I'm paying 10, 15 bucks and getting some life changing, uh, well, I have to take action on it, but he's literally telling you everything he knows in a book. Uh, and that's something I read too, is like people, I'm in, I heard this, I forgot who said this. I think it was Naval Ravikant. Do you know him? Mm-hmm. He's a really smart guy. I just recommend my favorite Twitter, one of my favorite Twitter follows. He said he's pretty insensitive on like his book budget because he doesn't care if he buys like 10 books, spends like $100 or he pays 20 bucks for a book. And as long as he gets one good idea out of it, that was worth it because 
I mean, think of all the stupid ways that you spend ten dollars on dinner or coffee and whatever. So that that stuck with me too. It's like I will buy dozens of books at a time. It's like no, yeah, I'm, I'm not like trying to look cool. I'm no, I'm not gonna read all these right away, but maybe I'll pick this one up. It'll have one idea. I'll have one takeaway, and make me one degree smarter. Maybe that's narcissistic. I don't know. I'm on this quest for like leveling up all the time. I think we all are. But yeah, I mean, I guess I can't really name. Although I have videos on my channel where I talk about like book re- recommendations. Obviously, I should probably update them. They're always changing. I've been getting a lot more into nonfiction. Hmm. But do you? Let me flip it on you. Oh. Do you have any like life changing moments with books? or life-changing books and what what was it Hmm. that stand out to you i mean you mentioned some of them yeah story of the eye was a big 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 deal for me and like what was it and was it just maybe one thing or something that you didn't expect or something that the author (laughs) didn't even intend but you picked it up somehow I had no idea that what you could do with a book of that size which was about uh, oh maybe 80 pages maybe less than 100 um, it captured so much strange, bizarre, philosophical thought into this really outrageous punk surrealist love story. You could call it, I mean, some people don't want to call it that. I think it's a love story. Um, it was a gateway into a rabbit hole of strange thought and experience that took into account religion, philosophy, you know, eroticism, violence, joy, horror, all these different things just mixed up into this just maelstrom of radical ideas. And I couldn't believe that it was... (laughs) that you could do that with just words on a page. It was astounding to me. Um, Other books that really changed me. The complexity of 2666 by Roberto Bolaño really was staggering and just maybe um, how do I even begin to describe it? What is that book? That book was a, a... I guess you have a review on it on your there, channel? There is a review of it, okay. yes. That was by a, a, the Chilean-Spanish author, Roberto Bolaño, who passed away a while back. And this was, um, I believe it was published posthumously. It was, I think, his magnum opus. And it was a sprawling tale about the murders of these young women in uh, Ciudad Juarez, you know. Uh, and uh, it was an incredible story. And I became addicted to it when I was uh, 19 and, and, uh, that had a tremendous impact on me. I'm not doing a very good job explaining why, but for some reason that was a a big gateway into a whole bunch of different literature. Took me back to the Latin American stuff of the 20th century. You know how this happens. You know, you find one author you love, Mm -hmm. you want to know what they love. And then more often than not, they've already told people in interviews what they love. And this is what something I wanted to touch on was, one of the things about writing and books and all this, you you begin to realize just how much people love to share things and how much they like to inspire other people, you know, and, and trade ideas and help, you know, and uh, share these thoughts to benefit other people. It's a kind of this, uh, this big act of generosity, mm-hmm. I think, with writing a book or with telling people about books and that's one takeaway that I've had with the channel is that it is literally, how would you say it? Full Give, circle? Yeah. Well, like giving me faith in like humanity and people. Like, I mean, people I, I actually believe now, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I didn't when I was in my early twenties. I believe now that people are genuinely for the most part, oh, the overwhelming most part, you know, uh, good, truly good and want to do the best and kind of avoid doing, uh, doing harm or, or causing stress or, you know, X, Y, and Z. Of course there's a 
you know, a percentage of them, yeah. you know, who come out on YouTube <laughs> and comment, uh, who don't want that, <laughs> especially yeah. with the kind of books that I, that I read. I, I piss a lot of people off, uh, but that's okay. Yeah. It's something yeah. people are really passionate about, like music films. Like what, how could you ever think this? Oh yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I yeah. can't believe you didn't get it. Yeah. Because when someone doesn't like something that you like, yeah, it's always like, what yeah. do you mean? Like right. when you show someone something and they don't like it, like a video, music, whatever, and they yeah. don't like it, you're like, are we friends? Are we even friends? Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Or or if you if you like something and uh, other people don't like the way you're talking about it, you know <laughs> they love it themselves and they're like, look at this guy thinking he knows that you know yeah. whatever. I think that's why people even watch. No, that's why I watch. Like. I think there is something about you just want to hear other people talk about things that you're interested in. You want, yeah. There's a sense of community. Yeah. And like you're saying with that author uh, from, what was it, Juarez? Oh, uh, um, Roberto Bolaño. Yeah, he's uh, he from, from uh, we, can, we can say Spain. Spain. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like you pick up all these. That's one thing that I told myself about. Okay, sure. I read, I read this book whatever it's it tells me a story but i inadvertently pick up all these things like i learn about this city and i learn about this food and i learn about this culture and then it it already exists in this whole bubble of culture and you kind of it's like a gateway into it and then you're like oh what's that city oh let me look up the history of that let me mm-hmm. google that and then like you're on it's mm-hmm. like you're on wikipedia and you're just clicking all these little links and then all of a sudden like you have all this new information like all this stuff already exists out there Mm -hmm. this was kind of just your pathway into it and this author naturally is going to write things that he knows about or that he's surrounded by and you now have a chance to know about those things too yeah and the guy's dead you know yeah exactly (laughs) right Uh, yeah yeah i guess let's like kind of wrapping up all that stuff yeah talk to you guys about why you should read go read go pick up a book (laughs) yeah (laughs) totally (laughs) go find a book what else do you want to do going forward with the channel like or just kind of keep going or what if there are no limits at all i would love to do something in kind of an anthony bourdain sense where it involves travel and cultural exploration uh centered around the idea of these authors where they came from who they were inspired by and all these different things i would love to do something like that and of course, in a totally selfish way, I would like to just write good books and, you know, uh, get the word out through the channel. But also, um, I'd be just happy <laughs> doing this as it is for the rest of my life, too, you know, and perhaps just getting better at it, yeah. you know, uh, just sharing things that I've found moving um, that were shared with me by people from literally all over the world it's just it's incredible if anything it's just you know from a selfish perspective it's just i feel very fortunate to be getting all of this uh uh all these opportunities to have great conversations about books with people you know yeah. so um i'd like to push it as far as it can possibly go yeah it's yeah it's you're doing a service in a way you're helping it seems kind of like selfish like it, it is way, yeah it totally is i it, mean I'm, no yeah. you're saying it's selfish <laughs> but really though you're actually providing a service of like giving other people the opportunity to find all these books and like have a place to talk about them and bringing some sort of enjoyment and learning and yeah. whatever into your life so thank you i, I hope so. that's why if you see it i always equate like i like to think as many people as you can help that's as much you'll, as you'll see back. So oh, yeah. Like, the more people you can help, the more it'll help yourself. In a way. Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, you're definitely helping people with just like being a place to talk about all this stuff. And it helps your, and you're one of those people that it helps is yourself. So oh, ab- cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Then, well, thank you very much, first off. I mean, really, I sincerely appreciate it. I hope it's just not too intimidating, you know, because I, I, I keep it extremely casual. Oh, um, no, yeah. You know? I think anyone will see that when they check yeah. out your channel. Is there anything else that you kind of want to final final say or anything that you want to bring up that we didn't touch on? or Reread books. Reread them. Yeah. Get some really, really good ones. 
of varying complexity, but with the with the difficult ones, if you know there's something in there that you didn't understand, but that is absolutely worth it, then reread them and get comfortable with them. I think it's I think that's a better strategy for really getting the most out of reading than just reading a it's whole bunch of fun. yeah exactly and just just a just a shitload of books that you don't really understand at all like reading like the complete work like reading all of uh, Dostoevsky and Nietzsche and Tolstoy and all these things and like reading Don Quixote and Ulysses and and just not getting uh or people love uh Thomas Pinchon that's been the, like one of the top recommended books was um Gravity's Rainbow uh reading all of these very thick very heavy very difficult books and just not getting anything out of them I mean pick some that like Maybe you didn't get all of it the first time, but you know there's some really tremendous ideas in there and just get familiar with them and really stick with them and try them again. I think that's where I'm at now. But on top of that, be discerning with your time. Choose wisely because you are going to die like me, like we are. Yeah. We have finite amount of life, you know, we, and we don't know when. That's the biggest, you know, reason to be discerning with what you read, how you spend your time. Um, and share what you love. Uh, yeah. If some, yeah, if something really, really hits you hard, then share share what you love because you're not the only one who it's going to connect with, even if it's weird as hell, even if it is completely bizarre and outrageous. I mean, we're not <laughs> we're not all that different. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, I think that goes with anything like sharing, especially yeah. if you're thinking about if you're interested in this kind of stuff, like making content or whatever. It begins with sharing what you love or scratching your own itch yeah for sure be reading your books or whatever yeah if you're lucky enough to have an obsession then then use it yeah. <laughs> i mean seriously where can uh people check out all your stuff and mm -hmm. find you what's the best way for them to yeah. keep in touch with you and possibly reach out to you if they enjoyed something you said or they want to ask you a question or sure i urge everyone if you've listened this far do send Cliff or I a message. Let us know if you enjoyed the, the episode or if there's something that just let us just send us a message about what you're thinking right now. Totally. <laughs> By all means. Yeah. Oh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. I'm on all of that. But uh, the, the big one would be YouTube. Uh, books are better than food um, or better than yeah, food. Just book type reviews. better than food. You'll find it all or your yep. name. Yep. exactly. Yeah. Which is funny. I wanted to. Oh, there's so much stuff I didn't even get to. Like why better than food? Oh, I can tell you that really quick. It was it's just it's pure theft. It's it was from a, a guy named um Jeff Noon. He was a British author, is a British author, I think. Uh and he wrote uh, some cyberpunk novels and I was reading stuff like that, like Jeff Noon and William Gibson when I was a, a teenager. And Jeff Noon did like I think he just listed like five books or something or that that really he loved. He loved these five books and the number one was The Collected Fictions of Jorge Luis Borges. And he said that book was like so essential. He just he said in this very declarative line, better than food. And I was like, oh, fuck. That's pretty cool. So I just stole that. Yeah. Yeah. So much stuff is inspired by s sentences and books. Oh, yeah. Um, Could go deep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think thank you so much for agreeing to come share some time, have this conversation. It's my pleasure. Hey, thank you. Fun. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, thank you so much people have uh right, thank you guys for listening if you've listened this far yes thank Definitely you i appreciate it uh you could check out all the other episodes and everything uh, on youtube insta youtube spotify itunes all that if you're want to check it out and i will see you all in the next episode thank you for listening go check out cliff's channel subscribe like all that and uh it's better than food yeah thanks a bunch man